of Canadarm2, uh, which is having a, a focal problem. To slow down a bit here in the beginning. And for your we are coming up on your first night pass in about five minutes. The uh, space station is moving into an orbital sunset as it flies uh, over eastern India, about to move out across the Bay of Bengal. And a view from uh, one of the external cameras on the truss of the station, looking at uh, Joe Acaba as he uh, sets up uh, his work site at the end of the uh, Canadarm2 robotic arm, clearly in the field of view. Okay, we copied Joe. Paulo is ready for you. Two drops of the Starbucks Super Card Break Candle, EP1. He's in copies, comrade. Thanks. Hey, Boston, Paolo, you guys there? Yes, sir, Joe, we sure are. Okay, let me bring uh, my BRT around. See what it looks like. Copy, Robo, standing by. While the Kaba uh, continues uh, work uh, to set up uh, the portable foot restraint at the end of the Canadarm2 robotic arm, Randy Bresnik uh, will begin the early stages of uh, the procedures uh, to remove thermal insulation from a pair of uh, electrical spare parts that are located on a uh, spare parts uh, platform called ESP2, the external stowage platform outside of the Quest airlock of the station. The uh, removal of uh, thermal insulation from a main bus switching unit and the tie down of some of that insulation on a direct current switching unit will uh, more easily prepare those spare parts uh, for future use uh, for robotic replacement of uh, any such a component that would fail on the space station. Uh, there is no replacement work uh, currently contemplated involving a main bus switching unit or a direct current switching unit. This is simply uh, preparatory work in the event uh, a robotic uh, removal and replacement of either of those two spare parts would be required in the future. Uh, gentlemen, I think I can get the uh, TFR in from this position. Happy. Okay, Joe, you're looking for a clocking of 12. Well, you have a... I agree.
Once again, uh, we're handing uh, over between satellites on our tracking and data relay satellite system. Uh, so far, so good. Almost 40 minutes into today's spacewalk by Bresnik and Akaba, a uh, failed fuse on a uh, spare parts platform on the uh, special purpose dexterous manipulator called Dexter, which is used as a robotic arm extension for work uh, outside of the space station that has been replaced by Bresnik. Cobb is setting up a portable foot restraint at the end of the uh, robotic arm and uh, Bresnik uh, beginning the early stages of uh, putting himself at the work site uh, to remove uh, thermal insulation from two electrical spare parts. Back with our uh, downlink television capability from the station. This is the view from Randy Bresnik's helmet camera. Bresnik is uh, back at the Quest airlock where he will stow the failed fuse he uh, replaced a short time ago on the Dexter robotic platform. For the pull and twist. Pull and twist. Copy good. Pull twist. Confirm black on black. Black on black. And uh, now the view from Joe Acaba's helmet camera as he uh, secures uh, the foot restraint to the end of the Canadarm 2. Papa, Fox 6. Fox 6. And back to Randy Bresnik's view, looking right uh, into the crew lock section of Quest. ORU bag stowed. You will temp stow the large ORU bag outside the airlock, and then you'll grab the CLA bag and take that up to the work site. Give me one second. And Mark, I like your wire tie. I'm very glad to hear that. That baby ain't going nowhere. And a good view of uh, Joe Acaba uh, cleaning up uh, the setup of that portable foot restraint at the end of the Canadarm2 robotic arm. He is working right at the uh, latching end effector. That's the new Lee, as it is called by its acronym, that was installed by Bresnik and Mark Vandehei during the first of these three spacewalks uh, back on October 5th. It is on that latching end effector that we have a uh, camera system that has a focal problem and uh, which will be replaced uh, later in today's spacewalk by a Kaba with a spare. This is the third spacewalk in a Kaba's career. The first two coming eight and a half years ago during the STS-119 mission, an assembly flight to the International Space Station aboard the shuttle Discovery. One has a BRT ret on the large bank. When the airlock ret. 
Copy. Working on the nice lever. What was that? Just working on that. Getting that fox trot, fox trot. Then locking you. And Joe, just to clarify, it's 12, Papa, Papa, Foxtrot, 6. Oh, thank you. All right, one has adjustable the large bag to the aft stanchion or aft end of 0504. Copy 0504 for the large bag. Something can get snagged, it will. Okay, and Joe, uh, from your... Uh, has... Okay, Joe, uh, from your... Joe, it looks like from your WVS that we're seeing some red on one of your tethers. Can you check your safety tethers and your waist tethers for us? Sure. So can hear. Yeah, I'm looking at my red waist tether, and I do see a red band. And that's on your waist tether, Joe? So I need my, my red each tether. See, an EV-1, was there going to bring a uh, parachute tether out of the staging bag with me? And Joe, we'd like you to take a look. Do you see any through stitches remaining on your red safety tether? All right, let me get to a good spot here. Give me a second. Okay, can you say that question again? And comrade, uh, please stand by while we have Joe inspect for a through stitch on his red safety tether. Waiting up your luck. Okay, so if you could describe exactly what you want me to look for. Are you with me there, dude? Copy, stand by.
Okay, Joe, we're looking for you to do a safety tether inspection, just like you did pre-EVA. And what you need to see is at least one through stitch in one location. And refresh my memory on what you mean by through stitch. Stand by. So through the white fabric, it's over top, over top of the red. There should be two through stitches, one kind of on the left and one on the right. It looks like just thread, and it goes all the way through the white the fabric covering the red on both yeah, sides. Yeah, so the fabric covering the red has pulled back. Are both of those uh, stitches gone? The way it is pulled back, I have to say, hold on a second. Okay, Joe, that safety tether is no-go, so comrade, we would like you to grab the spare safety tether out of the airlock and bring it to Joe. You are welcome. Okay, and Joe, you're good to just remain put until comrade gets to you with your new safety tether. I'll be there. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, that uh, conversation between Nicole Mann here in Mission Control and uh, Joe Acaba outside of uh, the Quest airlock of the International Space Station has to do with uh, the uh, condition of uh, one of his safety tethers. There are multiple redundancies of tethers to keep uh, the crew members uh, safely uh, secured at their various work sites uh, during the course of a spacewalk. So uh, with a little bit of wear and tear on one of the safety tethers uh, that Akab is using today, Randy Bresnik will bring him a spare. Uh, no harm, no foul here. The crew uh, running well ahead of the timeline at this point. A new safety tether will be installed in the complement of tethers that Akab uses outside, and he'll be uh, given the go-ahead to press ahead with his work. And Joe, we'd like you to lock your waist tether that you have down to structure there. Yeah, I've done that, thanks. We'll just be a couple of minutes jokes together. Get in and uh, drop the uh, hatch a little bit. Copy that.
This is Mission Control Houston, 54 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk. Uh, the first task of uh, the day having been quickly disposed of by Randy Bresnik, that being the replacement of a uh, failed fuse on a uh, spare parts platform on the Special Purpose Dextrous Manipulator, or Dexter, which is a robotic arm extension for the Canadarm2 robotic arm that you see there in the field of view. Joe Acaba has uh, installed a portable foot restraint at the end of the robotic arm itself that he will use as a work platform a short time from now to install a new uh, high-definition camera on the uh, starboard one uh, lower outboard portion of the truss and then press ahead uh, with the replacement of a camera system on the latching end effector or hand of the robotic arm that has experienced a focusing problem. Akaba in the process of swapping out uh, one safety tether that appears worn. Uh, this is uh, an extremely conservative uh, activity uh, to ensure that he has uh, multiple redundancy on safety tethers, no impact uh, to, to, te to the uh, spacewalk itself. That's a firm. And Houston agrees. Here at this way, Joe. Looks like I can add uh, one more thing to my list of uh, things I've been a Sherpa for. Sherpa for. I was going to say, you're starting to Sherpa early. Appreciate the assist. We're here for. You're looking at Joe Acaba along the uh, starboard truss of the International Space Station where he has installed a uh, portable foot restraint. He'll uh, resume uh, his work momentarily. The uh, reconfiguration of cables to uh, demate a pan and tilt unit cable on uh, the uh, camera port 3 location on the lower outboard portion of the starboard truss that uh, will enable him to install an enhanced high definition camera at camera port 3 for future use. The International Space Station currently flying just south of Tasmania, about to begin a uh, swing across the South Pacific. All of its systems operating in normal fashion. In the U.S. segment, uh, Paolo Nespoli of the European Space Agency and Mark Van de Hei, uh, conducting uh, work uh, at the moment unrelated to uh, today's spacewalk. Russian cosmonauts Alexander Mazurkin and uh, Sergei Rozansky are completing the inventory of cargo unloaded from the ISS Progress 68 cargo craft that docked to the space station back on Monday. We're coming out with it momentarily. Looks to you being efficient. What's that? 
because you're being efficient bringing up the CLA at the same time. Bring the BRT to the CLA bag. While we're waiting here, a few more questions uh, provided to us uh, on Twitter as uh, we are soliciting uh, questions on social media from those uh, tuning in to today's spacewalk. Frank Brown asks, how far does Comrade, that's Randy Bresnik's uh, call sign, how far does Comrade have to go to deliver the tether? And that is uh, a very short distance uh, between this work site and uh, the Quest airlock, no more than just a few feet. A uh, very uh, expeditious uh, transit uh, from uh, this particular work site that you're looking at where Joe Acaba is uh, standing by uh, as Bresnik will uh, bring a replacement safety tether out to Acaba to replace uh, the worn safety tether that uh, the crew noticed a short time from now. Another question uh, regarding the tethers, uh, what would have happened if you didn't switch the tethers? Uh, we could have continued. Uh, the uh, safety tether in question uh, was a bit worn on Joe Acaba, uh, but there are multiple tethers uh, to keep him secured. Uh, and uh, again, uh, both crew members, all spacewalkers wear uh, simplified aid for EVA rescue backpacks, the jet packs that they would use in the highly unlikely event that they would become untethered altogether. They could propel themselves back to the safety of a station structure. And comrade, just for your essay, we are ahead of timeline, so we'll have you help Joe with the safety tether reconfig, and then we'll have time to stow his degraded red safety tether back in the airlock before continuing on. Sure. All right, Joe, where would you like the CLA bag? Um, I don't where I'm at or where we talked about. You can put it, uh, yeah, I would just go uh, outboard just a little bit forward. Right there. Yeah. Randy Bresnik uh, now has rejoined uh, Joe Acaba at the uh, Starboard uh, Truss worksite, where Acaba continues uh, to close out uh, work to set up. Uh, all of the tools and tethers he will need for the installation of a high-definition camera on the starboard truss a short time from now. And uh, following that, uh, the uh, replacement of a uh, 
degraded uh, camera system on the latching end effector called a camera light assembly or CLA that uh, has experienced a focal problem and needs to be replaced prior uh, to the grapple and installation of the uh, orbital ATK Cygnus cargo craft that will be launched from the Wallops flight facility in Virginia on November 11th arriving at the station on November 13th. Right. CLA is unadjustable. We see the rail and it's the inside bay three. We will not wreck. Three main spares stay together. Houston copy CLA bag on the cedar rail. Bresnik uh, has stowed uh, the uh, the bag containing the replacement uh, camera light assembly to be installed on the latching end effector at the end of the robotic arm uh, by Joe Acaba a short time from now. He will retrieve a spare safety tether to deliver that to Acaba to uh, replace uh, one that uh, was observed to be a bit worn. Additional questions on Twitter uh, coming in to us uh, from interested viewers. Adrian uh, Zarilla asks, is it possible for an astronaut to suit himself up for an EVA without any assistance? Uh, the answer would be no. Uh, always needs assistance uh, based on the, uh, the bulkiness of the spacesuit and the various uh, uh, complex tools and uh, equipment that uh, must be properly installed on a crew member's spacesuit uh, prior to the time that they move outside into the vacuum of space. Uh, M1N1 underscore Cooper asks, how many times will the space station orbit the Earth during the time of the spacewalk? Well, that depends on how long the spacewalk lasts, but uh, the space station orbits the Earth once every 90 minutes. And Comrade and Joe, while you're getting set up there, we request a uh, safer handle check so that you can buddy check each other for both crew members. Ready for that thing? The way you have it. We're uh, out of range of a downlink television capability uh, from the International Space Station for about another five minutes or so as the station flies over the South Pacific, moving from southwest to northeast. Put it directly on the arm and we'll lock it. Okay. We'll swap. And make it. How about I hand you the yellow one? Take a yellow right here. You can just rub the handle itself. It's easier. Uh, 
Right. Yellow is closed and locked on the R handrail. I'm going to throw on a waist cutter and then go on over and put the red hook on you. Hand the red, I'll do it. Yes, and where you, where's the green hook supposed to go? We're going to leave right here on this hand rail. Anywhere on the cedar rail. Why don't you take your green hook? Lock the reel. This is Mission Control Houston, one hour, 11 minutes into uh, the spacewalk. Uh, the replacement safety tether has now been installed uh, uh, for Joe Acaba as we regain our downlink television capability from the International Space Station. Everything is proceeding uh, just about on the timeline. As uh, you look at uh, one of the helmet camera views uh, from the crew members outside, Randy Bresnik and Joe Acaba conducting the 205th spacewalk in support of Space Station Assembly and Maintenance. This view from Randy Bresnik's helmet camera. You saw Joe Acaba's helmet camera a moment ago. Green Greenhook is on the uh, hand, uh, spur 3413 wing expansion. Remove the yellow hook, put that on my mini workstation. Unlock that wheel. Right. Then oh, we'll release this red hook. If you can hold your D-ring extender. And removing the uh, your waist is still locked. It'll lock your waist tether there. I'll lock to the arm. Uh, uh, you are the just if this, this was the wrong hook. <laughs> double, <laughs> double backup safety. <laughs> All right. The red safety tether has been removed from AVT. Houston copies. Joe Acaba now back uh, in the normal tether configuration here. As uh, we press ahead, a good view of uh, the two spacewalkers right by the Canadarm2 robotic arm. That's right. Okay, and fellas, while we have you there together, can we just get one more rundown of Joe's uh, safety tether config and hook status, and then we'll check your, each of your safer handles, and then we can resume. Resume. Right, Joe, your uh, safer has um, diplomatic control has deployed, so we'll come your way. Yeah, let's get on, your, get on the uh, 
and fix each other to fix. My red hook is closed and locked on my D-ring extender. The yellow hook is on the arm, closed and locked. The reel is unlocked. And Houston, we've got to be a problem with Joe interesting the APFR to make it really easy to uh, fix his paper controller. Hey, from you have a go to ingress the arm. Joe, you have to get full in. Just get stable with your toes and look at that. A final check of uh, tethers and uh, tools for the crew members outside before they resume their work. Randy Bresnik at the bottom of your screen as EV-1 or extravehicular crew member number one wearing the suit bearing the red stripes. Joe Acaba has the suit with no stripes as EV-2. On top, come down to the right. There you go. Under. On the right side. And comrade, when you get a check-in, can you please check the EV2, check the power switch is off on the hand controller of his saver. Okay. All right. Can you uh, yep, bend down, grab your ingress seat, and jam your toes in? Oh, well, I can. The helmet camera view from Randy Bresnik as he uh, completes uh, preparatory work uh, for the uh, other tasks that lie ahead. He'll next uh, be uh, working to remove uh, thermal insulation from two electrical spare parts uh, right outside of the Quest airlock on what is known as ESP2, our ex external stowage platform number two, a spare parts depot in which a number of critical spare parts are housed for future use if required. Joe Acaba will uh, now begin work uh, to reconfigure a cable and to demate a pan and tilt unit cable uh, for a uh, camera system uh, on what is called camera port 3 on the starboard one lower outboard area of the truss that uh, will be replaced uh, with an enhanced high definition camera in that position. All right, so you're, yeah, okay. Right heel was closed. So if you go inboard with the heel and then down, inboard, down, down, and out. Okay, you're in on the right. That'll be good enough. And yaw your back. All right. Walk in the yaw right there. All right, and come on up and. And comrade, for those settings, it should be Foxtrot 6. Don't worry about that after we. Take care of the safe while we're done here, if that's all right. No problem. Sounds like a good plan. All right. Total power switch is off. The International Space Station now flying into an orbital sunrise over the uh, eastern Pacific Ocean. This uh, orbit of the Earth uh, will carry the station over Nicaragua, Nicaragua a short time from now. Uh, we are one hour, 18 minutes into the spacewalk, uh, the crew pressing ahead with its tasks, the highlight of which will be the replacement of a camera system on the end effector of the station's robotic arm. Uh, that is experiencing a focusing problem and which needs to be replaced prior to its grapple of uh, the next visiting vehicle to the station, that being the orbital ATK Cygnus cargo craft that is due to be launched in just a few weeks from the Wallops flight facility in Virginia. If I get a chance to do this EVA. Yeah, I had to do this on my first with, uh, or the second with Ricky. And a view of the two spacewalkers uh, setting up the workstation uh, at the end uh, of the robotic arm uh, on the starboard truss of the station. You can see Joe Acaba. He has planted his feet in the portable foot restraint.
that he installed at the end of the uh, robotic arm and a good view of the latching end effector, the hand at the end of Canadarm 2. That's uh, the uh, replacement latching end effector that was installed by Bresnik and Mark Vandehei uh, during the first of this suite of three spacewalks back on October 5th. Go ahead and put my head out towards your safer now. Just let me yaw. Okay, roll. That's right. You put your hand back. Right there. Good. No. No, you can take your hand off. There. All right. Free to pull. Let me give you a leg. I don't know if you'd rather be an extender or something to let you. Success. Support the other dog. Good row. All right, all right. So let's get a configuration check at the rear. I'm going to take my upper daddy off you. Slide down here. Comrade, right, this guy right here. The Comrade. Right. I'm going to put that on that uh, camera bag. You got it. Be ready to roll. The camera, not see you late. Yep, I know. Okay. I'm just there. Uh, okay. Right. Tiny to here. Stays in the bay. And Joe, can we get a glove and hat check from you, please? All right, left glove. It's the same right glove. No change. And hat. Bye. Copy. Thank you. All right, Joe, you're ready to the camera bag. So I'm just going to remove your adjustable off the uh, lock bag, too. Thanks. Your Urkum is in front of the foot plate. Are you, uh, you have to get out of the ATFR or are you good to proceed from here? I'm going to be good to proceed from here. 
All right. You can just check those settings one more time down there. Oh, yep. I'll do that. And your left heel is not in. Your right is. Papa Papa Fox 6. Right heel, uh, there you go. And now it's upward. Left. A good view of uh, Joe Acaba's uh, booted feet uh, in the portable foot restraint, uh, being guided uh, into a secure position by Randy Bresnick. And this view from Bresnick's helmet camera. With all of uh, the tethers and tools properly configured, Acaba now will press ahead toward uh, the tasks involved uh, with the installation of this high-definition camera at what is called Camera Port 3 on the Starboard 1 lower outboard area of the truss of the International Space Station. Bresnik will move over to uh, an external stowage platform, ESP-2, as it is called, right outside of the Quest airlock, to remove and tie down insulation for two electrical spare parts housed on that uh, spare parts platform uh, so that uh, they may be more easily accessible for robotic uh, replacement work if required in the future. Outside of the airlock on the handrail and then continue on and when you're ready, Joe, you can send the arm to the truss back off position. All right, EV-1 copies, and thank you very much to our eagle-eyed EVA team that caught that. That was huge. Most definitely. All right, Mark and Paolo. Go ahead, Joe. All right, I am back with you, and I am on the uh, APFR. I am clear. The line's going to the truss, so I show this is go to maneuver to the truss back off position. Okay, Joe, with that, we're taking the brakes off, and we're going to go ahead, and the first motion, I'll let you know just before it happens, but the first motion will be in the uh, station forward direction. That's Mark Vandehei inside the International Space Station working with Paulo Nespoli on uh, the operation of the Canadarm2 robotic arm serving as a work platform uh, for Joe Acaba during today's tasks. The spacewalk now one hour, 26 minutes in duration. All right, Joe, here we go. With the, that motion is starting. Station forward. About 2.4 meters. Copy. Good motion. Copy. The International Space Station is about to cross uh, Central America, back out over the Caribbean. On this uh, pass from southwest and northeast, uh, the station and the spacewalkers outside of the station will cross over Cuba and back out over the Atlantic. One meter to go on that forward motion. Copy. Okay, Joe, that forward motion is complete. The next one is going to be station uh, starboard. Okay. okay, we just started that motion. About one meter to go. Okay. And Joe, while you're enjoying that ride, you're coming up on the coast of Nicaragua, and then you'll pass over Cuba. Thanks. Joe, that stops that starboard motion. Next one is going to be uh, Nader. Copy. Got about four and a half meters to go. Okay. 
Good, good, comrade. Everything hurts in the way. Okay, Joe, that completed the maneuver to the trust back off position. We're setting up for the joint OCAS. Copy. A good view of uh, Joe Acaba, well into his uh, third spacewalk of his career in the articulating portable foot restraint at the end of the uh, station's robotic arm. Soon to set up a shop uh, for the installation of this high definition camera on the uh, starboard truss of the International Space Station in what is known as Camera Port 3. This uh, helmet camera view from Joe Acaba as uh, the station crosses Nicaragua. Quite the view. Enjoy. No, we're just about to start that joint OCAS. Up your number eight. And that OCAS will be about five minutes long. Copy. You started that motion. Yep, that motion is moving. Mark Van de Heij operating the uh, station's robotic arm from a robotics workstation inside. Uh, the International Space Station as he fine-tunes the positioning of Joe Acaba to the worksite uh, for the installation of a high-definition camera 
along the lower outboard uh, area of the starboard one truss. In this uh, view from uh, one of the truss cameras, you can see uh, right behind Akaba uh, two Russian spacecraft. One is uh, the Progress 68 cargo craft in the lower right-hand corner that arrived at the station uh, back in uh, back on Monday. And just above uh, Akaba is uh, one of the two Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, that one uh, docked to the Poisk module on the space facing side of the International Space Station. That's the one that delivered uh, Akaba, Vandahai, and Alexander Mazurkin to the station uh, back in September. We're handing over uh, between satellites on our tracking and data relay satellite system. Continuing to take questions from you uh, on Twitter. For those of you uh, interested and in, uh, watching our activities today uh, with this spacewalk, Stemmen30 uh, asks, how much training does a CAPCOM or communicator here in Mission Control have to work uh, a spacewalk? Basically, I believe that question should read, uh, have to work to prepare for a spacewalk. In this case, uh, astronaut Nicole Mann is the spacewalk communicator here on console in Mission Control. Uh, these uh, astronauts are named uh, several months in advance of a spacewalk so that they can become familiar with all of the tasks and the crew members' uh, training uh, characteristics uh, for a particular excursion outside of the International Space Station, and they also attend uh, practice runs by other astronauts to uh, replicate uh, the work being conducted by the crew on orbit in the uh, Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory at the Sunny Carter Training Facility near the Johnson Space Center. Uh, so uh, Nicole Mann uh, was named uh, several months ago and has been following the preparations for the spacewalk and interfacing with the crew on board the station uh, on a repeated basis uh, for the past few months. Copy, comrade. Hey, Joe, the uh, terminal cast is complete. We're configuring cameras for the next. Again, Mark. The uh, joint OCAS is complete. We're configuring cameras for the next motion. Copy. Okay, and Joe, prior to the next arm movement into the work site, I have a caution for you on the ETVCG to minimize contact with the light and avoid the silver tape. And prior to your GCA, please verify your tools or U-bag and ingress aid are in a good config. Okay, my tools, ingress aid are up against me, and I've got the BRT behind me. I'm in a good config. While Akaba is preparing uh, to uh, demate a pan and tilt unit cable prior to the installation of uh, this new enhanced high definition camera at the uh, starboard one truss of the station, Randy Bresnik is in the early stages of uh, unbolting uh, thermal insulation from uh, two electronic uh, spare parts. One is called a main bus switching unit. The other is called a uh, direct current switching unit. These are spare parts, critical spare parts, that are located on a uh, spare parts platform outside of the Quest airlock. The uh, removal of this thermal insulation and tying it down uh, will uh, expose uh, the uh, grapple fixtures that are necessary uh, to uh, maneuver those spare parts.